all right let's let's wrap this up uh it's a gas station problem it's a lead code medium so buckle up get ready we're still evaluating the greedy technique pattern um come quite a long way so let's do it um this statement is kind of confusing but the example makes it a bit clearer the example down here makes it a bit clearer it says there are n gas stations along a circular route where the amount of gas at the i station is gas index at i we have a car with an unlimited gas tank oh that's nice and it costs like cost index at i of gas to travel from the i station to the next so the i plus plus one station we begin the journey with an empty tank at one of the gas stations find the index of the gas station in the integer array gas such that if we start from that index we may return to the same index by traversing through all the elements collecting gas i and consuming cost i if it is not possible to return negative one if there exists such an index it is guaranteed to be unique so if, if it exists it's going to be the only one it's basically what that is saying which is kind of beyond clear and then you have a bunch of constraints here and this example is good so in this case of the gas of arranged this way with a cost to get to the next station arranged like this the index the starting index is the index at three from zero one two three this is the gas station you can start at and make a complete cycle and wind up at 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 the end um, and they, they show this so you start at index three and fill up four units of gas that's what that means here and you travel to the station here index at five which also happens to uh, be a place where you can refuel with five so you had zero here you got four but it cost you one point to go to this place so you say four and minus one all right so by the time you get here you have three um three units of gas basically and it when you when it's time to move back here at this index you're going to fill up with five so three plus five negative two and it's going to cost you two to move over here and that's why it's like this and you just keep doing that uh, so you start off with six here, uh, you get one extra, so seven, but it's going to cost you three to go over here. So you wind up with four, as you can see, and so on. That's the way it works. Yeah. Now, in this case, we see the starting index is three as well. The same calculations check out. And in this case, there is no way, right? Because, and, and this is important, the total gas, uh, three plus two plus four is nine, is less than the total cost. It's less than three plus four plus three and so we know there's no point looking through anything there's no, just no way starting from zero that you're going to be able to make us make a circuit around these things in this case like i mentioned earlier this the cost total costs exceed the total gas inflows total gas outflows gas inflows and so we just say oh it doesn't exist negative one up next we will uh, check the solution. The naive approach is uh, all n squared, but the optimized approach is a greedy algorithm and it involves keeping track of the amount of gas in a tank and the total cost of the journey. If we find that we cannot complete the journey starting from the current gas station, we reset the starting point to the next gas, sta gas station and continue from there. This means we're making locally optimal choices at each step to find a solution. Therefore, this approach is a greedy algorithm. And it looks like this. And I'll hop through this code over here that demonstrate this and these steps over here as usual. Now, the logic of it is given below. If the total cost of the journey is greater than the total amount of gas available at all the gas stations, then it's impossible to travel through all gas stations. So the function returns negative one, which is what we see here. So we're gonna sum up the costs. So we're gonna sum up all the costs here. So reduce the costs, a very standard pattern of summing everything in an array. Then sum up all the gas prices, all the gas inflows actually, that we're gonna refills into sum of gas. If the cost is more than the gas, the amount we're going to spend is more than what we're going to ever receive just return negative one and we had an example here where i mean everything here is 10 and everything here 
is nine. So we just know you could, there's no way. There's no way we're gonna make a circuit circuit around these gas stations. So we just return negative one. Um, and next we will iterate through the gas stations from the start. And while iterating, we'll perform the following steps. So uh, we're done with this. Now we're gonna come here, iterate through, through all the gas stations. At each gas station, we'll calculate the amount of current gas available. And we'll do it by subtracting the cost of the journey from the gas available at that station and adding it to the current gas available. What does that look like? So we're gonna get the current gas. We starts off at zero outside the loop and the starting index starts off at zero. So we're checking the first gas station and we're starting off with zero, right? And we do, we update it by adding what's there from the difference between the inflow and the outflow at that particular station. So um, that's what this looks like. Uh, all this, this explanation, that's what this looks like. So, and in a, based on one of the examples we had, um, where it was possible actually. So we start off at here, um, we start off at zero, current gas plus four, which would be our gas at I, four, subtracted from the consumption, the cost at I, which we see here. So that's what this is. And that's what gives us three here. Yeah. So current gas would be three in this case. And then if it's negative, just push it forward. So it's not gonna work, right? But in this case, it's positive. We had three. But if we started from the get-go, from the beginning, we would have had zero plus one minus three, which is negative two. And that is not gonna work here. So we just shift, reset the current gas to zero. It can't be negative two. And move the starting index to the thing right after I, which is this. And that's how we eventually wound up at the starting index of three in this algorithm. Uh, here from from this step over here. Now, go back to the solution. Hope hope all this jumping around isn't confusing you. If it is, leave a comment that says so, and I will probably re try take a stab at re-recording this video. So if it's negative, we can't go further from the current station. So we reset it to zero and start from the next station. Return to the index of the gas station from where we can start our journey in such a way that oh, return the index actually of that gas station, which is what we see here, the starting index after it's been updated however many times, return it at the end of the day. Um, yeah, that's all. Fairly straightforward. Um, however, there was so, something kept bugging me, right? Why is it that you know for sure that in like in this case, um, you only needed to look through this. You only ever need to look through this once. You never need to need to look through this any more than once to find out if you can make a circuit. So that was bugging me quite a bit, but then the constraints of the question are what make things the way they are. Because number one, you can only ever have one place where if it's gonna work, it's gonna work. This can only be one. And the only condition that is not gonna work as based on the, way the problem is designed is when the total amount for the gas is less than the total is uh yes less than the total cost amount of gas is going to cost you right that's the only time it's not going to work every other time it's going to work right and it's only going to work in one specific case so those are the things you need to know and i felt like lead code did a great explanation of this so imagine these were different places you could walk through um the truth of the matter is in each station, there's something called a gain, right? Which is the cost um, of all the gas you're getting in, subtract it from the gas that's been leaving you. And I think there's a place I can highlight that here in this there solution. Um, so basically that's what this is, right? So in this case, you're the first station, you're gaining one, second station, you're losing on gaining nothing. Sec third, you're gaining one, gaining, the here you're losing four. And because of that, it overrides everything here with our algorithm, right? Based on the way we're going, um, looping through things here. So it's good, it's all good and nice until we get here, boom. Then this condition, this current gas is less than zero because negative four wipes out all these threes. So it becomes negative one. So we have to shift everything and start from this segment. So it's dividing the journey into segments is the way they explain it. And 
in this case, 1, 1, then negative 3. So the same thing happens, right? You break through. Yeah, you break it off and start again. You, you move, you shift the current gas back to 0, back to square 1, and move the starting index to the thing right after. And then we have 1, 1. This is the end, right? But because this is the end, uh, you can know for certain that this is what is right, right? Because you could reach the end of the array without another major loss. You know that this is this first segment uh, right after the last time you had to shift things is the right one. Why? Because this wraps around. So this last segment is actually part of number one, as you can see, as they say right here, technically. And so you see one, 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 which comes down to five is actually more than negative four. And because we checked from the beginning, if we had enough, um, inflows to offset the total amount of, of outflows um and this example is contrived because this is nine right but you see one two three four five six seven eight but in in imagine this was nine basically and uh you get this formula that's super important so the total gain is equal to the gain in each segment yeah and now the only way for this algorithm to ever work which which is explained by I mean, demonstrated by this breaking condition here. If the cost is ever more than the sum of the gas, then it's not, never, that's the only time that this is not going to work, the total cost. And so we can have this formula, the total gain, that is uh, inflows and minus outflows, is equal to the gains of each individual segment. And now if it's bigger than zero, it holds that gain one plus gain two plus gain three, and so on, must therefore be greater than zero. Because they are the same thing with total gain and that therefore that means gain one segment one if you carry everything over here on the opposite on the other side of the uh, the uh equality symbol right the greater than or less than each symbol which causes you to negate things it's gonna be the sum of every other thing every other thing and that is why this one segment once you reach the end whatever one segment you have is the beginning of that loop that we're looking for so it's like this math is important to explain why this even even works in the first place. Okay. So the gas gain at segment one is enough to support us passing through each remaining segment and return to the starting point of segment one. Therefore, that's what that means. Otherwise, this is less than zero, right? Total gain is definitely less than zero. And uh, therefore, there's no value station. Okay hopefully that's clear as clear as I could make it in the time I have uh, let us look at the time progressive so we look through the code so there is to it we're looping only once ever through the array which is incredible so we have a linear time and we don't store anything special so constant time constant space that's all uh, code is in the description check it out on github I will see you next time Thank you.